Nigel Sutcliffe, uh, Newman Street Tavern. How long have you been here now? We've been open 18 months. So we managed to, by the time we finished this game, we got open just before Christmas, last week in November 2012. So I think restaurants are like having children. I don't necessarily think they come at the right time, but you're blessed whenever they come. So just before Christmas was a bit of a hard challenge, but it was, it was a welcome one. You got through it. Yes, well, it's been incredibly successful and you've gained a very good reputation over that period of time. It's uh, still jolly hard work though, isn't it? Yeah, it's every day. You know, it's three services a day now because we've now started to do breakfast. So we have an idea of what we want to do and then you open it to the public and they tell you how they're going to make it work <laughs> and, you, and you have to sort of respond. So. It's rather different from things you've done in the past, isn't it? I mean, your history with Heston. I suppose growing up with Heston, sort of 95 to 2002, um, but it is all about customer care. We, we essentially do the same thing. The product might be different, the style might be slightly different, but again, it is genuinely look after your customer. And I think what I like about the informal atmosphere of the tavern is that people know how to behave in it, if you like. They're quite happy to cross the threshold. If we keep things simple, Peter tries to keep things simple with the, the way that he works. And all we have to do is, is sort of bring it to table. Tell me about the difference between the two floors. Try and provide a, the same space, the same attitude. But downstairs, with the Edwardian building, it, to me, the tavern downstairs is sort of firm and masculine, and it's a pint and some oysters, maybe a bit of terrine, very simple, call-in, casual. And then upstairs, if you've got a little bit more time, there's a little bit more opportunity, the chairs are a little bit more comfortable. And it's sort of back of the Edwardian house where you sort of come inside, it's more dining room, it's slightly more feminine. How many covers do you have on each floor? Uh, about 40. Yeah, 44 so, uh, push. And then 12 covers outside, yeah. So we have a plancher, we're just going to put some oil on the plancher. So you can do this in a non stick pan, it's absolutely fine. Sure. And I'm going to dust the fish with a little bit of flour. Again, to just stop it from sticking. So it's got a bit of flour on it. Yeah. Because it's so fresh, it will stick on this, uh -huh. which is not really where we want to be. So. Uh -huh. um, so there's oil, but obviously it's just a very, very fine layer, very, very well regulated. Um, it's a nice thick base, so it keeps heat. Once you put the fish on there, it doesn't drop temperature. So you can make a butter and tomato sauce while you're waiting for that to cook. Yeah. Finely chopped shallots, a little bit of white wine, a splash. I'm using sherry vinegar here, but you could use red wine vinegar. That would be absolutely fine. So we're just going to reduce that and put a pinch of salt into it. And that's just to give you some acidity for the base of your sauce. Right. So we can put a twist of pepper in there. I'm just going to cut up these tomatoes, which we've just lightly dried in the oven. So we just leave them in the oven overnight. So you can see they're only really half dried. I'm just going to crush that in with the shallots. This is a little bit like a burr blanc. Yeah. So we've just got that as the base. So just a touch of cream, I mean that was just yeah. into your spoon. Yeah. You can put cold butter in if you want, but just a little bit of butter sure. into that, just gently melt it in. So you've got the emulsion from the cream. Oh, that is lovely. The idea is that you want ripe, flavoursome tomatoes, it doesn't matter so much what they look like. So remind me, Chef, Paternoster. Then were you, were you at the boundaries? That's an officer, and then at the foundry for a little while. Uh, and then I met Nigel, so Nigel Sutcliffe, who, uh, who I've opened the business here sure. with. And so is it to get the contrast, really? Exactly. Well, your mouth gets bored, doesn't oh. it? So, like the chewing gum phenomena, it's not the gum that loses the flavour, it's your mouth that loses the patience <laughs> to keep tasting the same thing. So, it's good that you have punctuation, and that's why we've got spring onions and chives and and shallots in there with tomato and roast tomato, so hopefully there are little things happening all the time. Right. So we cook for about five minutes on each side, right. but it's a very moderate heat. Uh -huh. um, and then I'm just going to serve this straight on the fish. That can go up at the top. Delicious. Thank you. Are you going to try some? Yeah, absolutely. And this would be on your menu here. Well, it changes from day to day, so it may be on if they're catching place. Yeah. Um, and then the next day it'll be something slightly different. When we have good tasting tomatoes in, 
then it's one of our favourite garnishes to go with a piece of good fresh fish. I think it's terrific to have that attitude to it. It really is fantastic. It's very unusual to find that you're cooking every day with different ingredients. So the menu changes on a daily basis. Absolutely, but then that works with the meat and the fish. So sure. using a whole carcass, we've got lots of different cuts which need slightly different attention and slightly different ingredients to go with them. So it helps to promote that little bit of change, which keeps it interesting. It also means that the, the chefs who are working here, we have skilled chefs who are able to work with those differences and those inconsistencies in order to create a good, consistent offering for the customer. Peter, thank you. It's delicious.